Hey guys, Jordan here, and in this video, I'm gonna be answering a question slash comment I got on a recent video, so let's get into it. All right, so today's question is, or comment, was on a video that I made previously that says struggling with image noise, things to consider. Um, and I'll link to that video in the description if you haven't seen that one, but uh, D. Sanders says, been doing real estate photography for about 10 years, but you have brought a lot of insight to a few things, especially with this ISO. I did not bracket. I just shot raw and edit in Lightroom. Customers loved it, and I saw no need to change anything. However, I do see a more perfect way of doing things considering you use your use of window light, window pulls as some uh, say, yeah. You know, real estate photography, there is no right or wrong answer, right? You know, it all depends on your personal preferences and what you value as a real estate photographer or as a real estate photography company. You might hang your hat on the highest quality possible and you might spend five hours for each and every shoot um, and spend 10 minutes editing each and every photo, getting a perfect window pull. Or you might try to do things a little bit more on the efficient side of things, and that's definitely where I land on the realm of things. So yeah, so we shot brackets for a long time. We, we uh, do mix now, right? Some do brackets, some do, you know, we, we can do single exposure um, raw images and get a great result that our customers love, right? So at the end of the day, I think it's important um, to know what your customers are looking for, right? We don't have a one shoe fits all approach to our customers, right? So uh, depending on what size of the property, if it's a $100,000 home versus a million dollar house, you know, you may want to offer different products to your customers, right? So that's something to consider. Or you may just want to do the the best or, you know, the, or the most efficient for all, all of them. It really is is up to you. So, you know, when I make these YouTube videos, I'm not trying to convince you to um, do it a certain way, right? But, you know, I like to put these things out here to maybe help you think in a different way, or maybe you're struggling with one area, maybe it's holding you down, maybe you're spending so much time shooting and editing and you need to think a little bit differently so that you can actually make more money in the business and do more shoots um, if that's what you're looking to do, right? So anyways, yeah, th there is um, no right or wrong answer in regards to that, but yeah, in that video, I think, what was that video? Struggling with image noise, uh, things to consider. But I will say that um, the newer Sony cameras is what I shoot with typically, even at higher ISO settings. Now, everybody will have a noise tolerance, right? You might think that anything over ISO 100 is too noisy. Um, with these newer Sony cameras, you know, I am, I shoot sometimes as long as I'm not pushing shadows up super high where, you know, noise becomes a lot more visible. You know, you can push it all the way up to like 12,800 depending on the, sh on the shooting, right? Um, and the subject that you're shooting. I've definitely evolved uh, how I shoot properties this year in a more efficient manner. And I'll probably make some videos on that um, in the future. But yeah, so um, I really appreciate your, your comment, uh, D. Sanders. Yeah, and exactly, you know, that's the purpose of my videos, right? Just to make you think a little bit different. Oh, I might want to try this or do this or this. You know, at, at the end of the day, I just want to help other real estate photographers find success in this business, right? There's a whole lot of var variables to success. I, for one, have been in the trenches for almost 10 years here, uh, growing my real estate business. And I think at the end of the day, the trick to growing a successful real estate photography business is to get better each and every day. Don't get stuck in the way that you've always done business and see like, how can I make a better customer experience? How can I shoot faster? How can I edit faster? You know, think about all these uh, types of things is the way that I'm shooting um, the best way. Let me test different methods and uh, just don't get stuck in a time warp where everybody else is uh, changing around you, but you're staying the same. Um, you might be frustrated with your business results, you know, if, if that is the case. You know, things change a lot. Technology changes, camera, quality on the ISO range changes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that change and that's why I 
pretty much buy almost all the new equipment that come out so I can test and see, all right, is, is this a piece of a, a tool that will help me uh, get to uh, the goals that we want to achieve here um, at, at my company? So anyways, that's a long-winded question or a long-winded answer. I don't want to go on and on. Uh, on this one, but that's gonna do it for this one. If you got value and like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as I cons consistently put out daily real estate photography videos just like this. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.